Well, good afternoon. Bob Allen here for another edition of Meet the Candidate. And today we are really privileged to have Hannah Beth Jackson in our studio. Hannah Beth is a candidate for the State of California Senate. And uh, that's the 19th district, that's isn't right. it? Uh -huh. Hannah Beth, welcome to our studio here at Food Share. Well, it's a pleasure to be back. I have enjoyed uh, the other times we've chatted, although now we're in a new facility, and this is really quite impressive. The, the food share work that's being done here, so important as it is, mm -hmm. is uh, it's just quite a marvel. I, I, getting the tour through here was very impressive. But you know, it also strikes me um, how the need has gotten so much greater, and that yeah. both uh, saddens me to see that we are really having to provide more services for people. On the other hand, the communities come together, they do a great job, there's just a lot of uh, spirit and energy here, so thanks so much for including me in this process. That's, that's the positive side yeah, yeah. of this whole thing, you're absolutely right. But today, we're here not only to find out about the political side of Hannah Beth Jackson, but really who Hannah Beth Jackson is. So. Why don't you share? I know both of us are transplanted East Coasters, so right. share with the viewers uh, where you started out your life and uh, how you came to California. Well, I was very lucky to come here. I started out uh, in Newton, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston, where I was uh, raised uh, by my parents, lived in very close proximity to my grandparents. I'm the middle child, so that you know, there'll be some amateur psychologists out there who work on that one. Uh, and uh, was very blessed to uh, be raised in a, a wonderful community with an outstanding public education system. Education has really always been uh, very, very important to my family and their background. Uh, my grandfather came to this country uh, at the age of four, escaping uh, the pogroms of Eastern Europe and uh, education was something he kept uh, insisting and instilling in us and uh, it was something that was very important to me as was my career at playing baseball. I know you and I share the love of baseball but actually it was baseball that got me interested in politics and uh, I really feel it's a story worth telling because it was the beginning of my political career even though I was only seven. But I wanted to play Little League, and I was really a great little Sandlot player. And frankly, when you're that little, there aren't too many differences between uh, the boys and girls, except that I was uh, uh, the best guy on the team. <laughs> and when it came time to try out for Little League, I wasn't allowed to try out because I was a girl. And I thought, well, wait a minute, this is America. And in America, if you do your best and you're good, you should be able to do anything. At least that's what I thought. So my parents said, well, you know, there is something you can do. America says that if you uh, are concerned about something, you have the ability to try to get it before the powers that be to change it. So wow. we had a clipboard. I went around my neighborhood with a petition to try to uh, change the rules so that girls could play Little League and I went door to door and some people patted me on the head and told me that I should go back and play with dolls and others signed it and we sent it out to the Little League Association and I never heard back from them. Wow. So I said, you know what, they're going to regret that they wouldn't even acknowledge receipt that they had received this petition that I had gone around the neighborhood working so hard to get to them. And How course, old were you at that time? I was seven. Wow. And the rest is history. So I've always <laughs> had a passion for this. And uh, so I, I grew up in, in, in that area, in the Boston area. Um, my parents were smart enough to realize I really loved sports. I loved the competition. And they directed me into tennis. And one of the things that a lot of people don't know about me is that I was actually the New England Junior Tennis Champion as a kid growing mm -hmm. up. And I've always loved the game. I've always loved sports. And uh, when I was in college, I came out to California. I came to Scripps College in Claremont, California, um, where I graduated. And we started a tennis team. Again, sports for women was still in those days not that well received. No, Title so IX, right? We, we were before <laughs> Title IX. So uh, we started a team, um, and I was the, the number one player on our college team. We did very, very well. Um, it really instilled in me that confidence that you get when you can strive and succeed. And of course, since then, we've had Title IX, which I have always felt has been one of the critical components in helping young women uh, get ahead. It provides that, that confidence, that ability to learn teamwork and sportsmanship. And it's been a big part of my uh, political efforts, too, to, to make sure that we protect and, and keep Title IX so that young girls and women have the opportunities. And in fact, if you look at the Olympics this past year, 
who won the majority of those gold medals for the United States. It was the, the mm -hmm. women. So sure. uh, it's, it, that was a wonderful experience. I came out here, I went back to law school uh, at Boston University, School of Law, graduated there, and then came back to California. I, I knew I just, California. You know, it was in you already. Well, California, I always felt and still feel is a place where dreams are made and dreams are fulfilled. and. Uh, it, it's just a, a, a unique place on the planet. Uh, to me, this we are in the most beautiful place on Earth, and uh, it's a place where opportunity has always been available if you, again, work hard and play by the rules and do your best. So I came back here, started my career as a deputy district attorney. There, I, I had looked uh, for a position in Ventura and in Santa Barbara. They weren't hiring in Ventura. They were hiring in Santa Barbara, and so I started my career as a deputy DA. And um, I was very actively involved in, uh, in the whole movement to, to try to deal with the issue of domestic violence, which had not been really recognized. There were many, many challenges uh, facing women in the area of, of rape. Uh, we, you know, it was a, it was a crime that uh, was not discussed, and women were really being victimized. The whole issue of domestic violence, a crime that really wasn't being discussed because a man's home was his castle in those days. And so I worked very hard to, to, uh, to work with other women's groups, uh, particularly women lawyers, to really try to change the laws in that area. And we were successful. It's taken some period of time. But of course, my interest in that whole issue of domestic violence has extended mm -hmm. uh, well into my political as well as my legal career. Okay, before we get in too much more into the detail of the political side, okay, when you came to California, I know you started your own family out here, so. Well, this is true. In fact, uh, I met my husband um, uh, here in the, uh, when I was in the Santa Barbara DA's office. Uh, we got married. Uh, he had been actually the assistant DA in Ventura under a fellow named Woody Deem, so that's a long time ago. There may be a few of you listeners who remember back that far. But we started a law practice together in 1981. We bought an old Victorian-style building right on Santa Clara Street, East Santa Clara Street. We restored it to its uh, or original condition, and I'm pleased to say that many of the other um, old Victorians have since been restored. Mm -hmm. We practiced law there for 19 years. Um, then my, uh, then I actually entered, uh, ran for and won a position in the State Assembly. Right, that was uh, in 1998? Uh, November 98 through, uh, through November of uh, 2004, 2004, and term limits required that I leave office. But in the intervening time, uh, we, uh, we raised our daughter, Jenny, who is now uh, uh, finished her first year as an attorney back in Washington, D.C., and is married and uh, is about to start her own family, about which I'm very excited. Grandma. Uh, grandma. <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, you know, it's been a wonderful life. I mean, this is really, a, truly a wonderful place to raise a family. Jenny was actually born at Community Memorial Hospital right here in Ventura. So uh, I feel a very strong kinship to this community and very blessed that mm -hmm. we've uh, been able to uh, do our uh, what we do best. Uh, we, we had a small law practice. We actually had up to 13 employees at one time, so I know what it's like to run a small business, and mm -hmm. it's not easy Problems, even in a, yeah. in a, good, day, a mm -hmm. good situation, but certainly the opportunity is still there. There's so much opportunity in this area with our great universities. Uh, UC Santa Barbara, my husband and I have been involved uh, with that uh, school for many, many years. Um, I was actually, after I left the assembly in uh, 2004, I became UCSB's first public policy maker in residence, mm -hmm. which I did for the next year. And then I continued to teach their class on uh, California politics and public policy. Uh, and uh, it was very exciting. Uh, had a class full of young people really interested in the topic, which of course always makes it more fun. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have taught. Um, I uh, ha taught uh, this year, I've been an adjunct professor at Antioch College, so I've seen both the public and the private sector. And during the intervening years, I also um, uh, started two nonprofits that were designed to try to advance uh, a more e equal, uh, progressive view of uh, California's political life. So I have, uh, I have seen the whole chessboard, as they say, and I like to think that I really have an understanding of how we need to, what we need to do and how we need to go about fixing the problems in our state. And is that the main reason that you have now decided to run for the state senate? 
Well, you know, I, I'm a problem solver. I okay. have been my whole life, and I'm passionate about uh, the notion that this is the greatest state, the greatest country on, the, uh, on earth. It's a place where everybody who is here should have the opportunity to work hard and do their best and get a good education and live the great American dream. I mean, I'm a product of that. Uh, my my grandparents, as I said, came over from the old country with nothing but the, the belief that this was America and anything was possible. They got their education, they got their training, they worked hard, they were successful. My dad was a small businessman, raised a family, there were, there were three children. Um, we, we had a wonderful, wonderful life, but it took hard work and we were direct we were motivated by that notion that you have to work hard uh, to succeed and we did and we all have and so I really think that's the promise and it's a promise that we need to provide for the next generation so when I looked out there and saw uh, you know I ran for the state senate in 2008 in a district that was really not designed for a Democrat uh, was not designed for someone who um, really believed in the values that, that uh, I think are critically important. I barely lost, but they redistricted the seat. And as a result, the seat is now much more uh, favorably disposed to the things that I believe in. And I'm very confident that I'm going to have a chance to get back to Sacramento and deal with the challenges that we face today, getting people back to work, protecting our education system. These are the things that really have motivated me. And I believe that I can go back and work as I did in the assembly in a bipartisan fashion and get the job done. Well, you know that we wish you the best of luck in trying to accomplish those goals. I know that in, in our lifetime, this is about the worst that I have ever seen. And I, I think what you're saying is that you truly believe you can make a difference by going back to the state center. Is that about what oh, I'm absolutely. getting from? You know, I think it, there's no point in pointing the finger mm -hmm. at anybody. Yeah. We've got to come together and work together. We have got to recognize that California has always been uh, the state that invents the future. We have before us uh, some of the greatest public universities uh, in the world, mm -hmm. and we need to invest in them. We need to invest in infrastructure to put people back to work. We need to get people back to work. The way you do it, we've got to cut through the red tape. You know, out of adversity comes opportunity. We have been in a, 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 a national recession, the Great Recession, the greatest recession since the Great Depression of the late 20s. There are a lot of reasons for it. We've got to correct those things. But the people now, our people, the people of this community, are anxious to get back to work. And there are ways that we can make that happen. As I mentioned, we cut the red tape. Uh, we identify areas where we are uh, overextended ourselves, whether we need to <coughs> reduce um, some of the, you know, we've got all these uh, regulations that sometimes are duplicative. They have to be streamlined, not removed, because a lot of them are very important to protecting our quality of life, which is part of what brings us all here, why we all live in a place that is relatively expensive. But there's quality of life here that's, criti that's critical to, for all of us that we want to pass on to our children. So uh, the goal is to cut through uh, the red tape, to, to, to revisit regulation, to get, to, to get people back to work by working, by retraining them. You know, the master plan of California was a brilliant plan. You and I come from states where community colleges were not really central. Well, in California they are, and throughout this district, which extends from Santa Maria all the way through Camarillo, my poor little Prius, I'm at the gas station every other day, and that car gets 45 miles to the gallon. Um, but but th we have colleges and universities, and we've got the community college system here, where we are, w which is designed to help retrain people. It's also been used, uh, uh, I think, very effectively for our high school students, those who have advanced beyond what high school has to offer. We have historically invited those young people to come in and take college level courses. Well, we can't do that anymore mm -hmm. because the cutbacks have been so severe. Not only can't we do that for these young people. People. We can't even do it for the community college students, people who are needing to retrain. Part of the system was so that when we need to pivot, when the world changes, when we talked about technologies changing and you and I are sort of of a generation that looks in awe and complete lack of understanding of how this all works, but there are others 
who are who are invested or who should be able to invest in that kind of a career the new technologies whether it's the green technologies or high technologies computer tech what it, whatever it is our community college system was set up to make sure that we could train those people into 21st century technologies when i was in the assembly we found that we had a terrible shortage of nurses now, healthcare is one industry, sadly, that is not uh, reducing in size. We're seeing more and more need for it. Well, I did legislation that would require or, or encourage, I should say, the private sector to work with our community colleges so we could train more nurses so that we would end up having uh, uh, more people working in what are much higher paying jobs uh, and did legislation with that. The legislation had also included technology. Um, at the time we had to kind of slice it down. I'm going to bring that bill back as one of my first bills on job training. Let's make sure that we can create those public-private partnerships to, and work together to get more <coughs> and more people uh, back into the workforce. We've got UC Santa Barbara, which is one of the, t is the top two, among the top two leading universities, public universities in the country when it comes to physics and engineering. There is a lot of development out there in the green technologies where people want to stay in the area and develop these companies. We have to work with them to make sure that happens. We have down in Camarillo, we've got a high tech corridor, which is one of the top tech, uh, one of the top four technology corridors in the state of California with high paying jobs. We've got the great Cal State University of Channel Islands, the first uh, four year university in, I think, the country in the 21st century. For, uh, Dr. Rush and his staff yeah. people, great ideas, great vision. Uh, we've got to make sure that we can see that implemented. That will get people back to work. That'll stimulate the economy. When we stimulate the economy, there's more opportunity to create. For everyone. Exactly. And that's, that's <coughs> the vision I have, and that's why I'm a long way around it, but that's why I'm running. I feel very strongly about that. Well, so that all our viewers uh, can know how to get in touch with you, why don't you take a moment, <coughs> excuse me, and share with everybody uh, telephone numbers and any website and email address. Well, the best thing to do is to get a hold of us on our uh, website. It's uh, go to www.hanna, H-A-N-N-A-H, hyphen, Beth, B-E-T-H, 2012.com. That's uh, got a lot of information about my positions. It also lists uh, my endorsements. I'm very proud to have the endorsements of our teachers, our firefighters, our police, bipartisan support uh, from a number of our community leaders. I've worked very closely with all of these groups and I'm very honored to have their support. I invite you to take a look and to see uh, all the support that I've got that basically is a reflection of the work that I've done uh, in the past while in the legislature, the things that are important to me. Uh, I am committed to making sure that in the future we have the support that we get off of this Tea Party line, that we stop this <coughs> war on women, that we make, make sure we have access to birth control, to maternity care, to uh, reproductive of choice for our families. These are the things that drive me and I invite people to look at our website for more information. Well, we thank you so much for joining us. I think it was, I've learned so much more about you today. So Great. I'm sure the rest of our uh, viewers will uh, really enjoy it too. And I can't wish you anything but the best of luck. Thank and thank you so you much, so much for it. coming and joining us My today. Pleasure.